Deborah Kerr and Emma Russell taking a really solid fifth place for them after their fourth place in the World Championships last year. Well, I'm afraid we've only got one more race to go. It is uh, an Olympic discipline for Paris. It will be an exciting and close race, this one. It is the K2 men's 500 meter final. Now you can see the lineup, Slovakia, Germany, Ukraine, Portugal, watch for them off the start, Australians, Hungary, Lithuania, USA, and the Czech Republic. This is, um, this is gonna be incredibly exciting race. Uh, I haven't seen a field that's so competitive in such an event as this, as this K2 500. Going through each semi-final, it was cutthroat. There was at least five crews that has the capability to be in this final and each semi-final. So to get through here was like a, like a battle itself. So it was quite successful for any crew to be here. But um, in this final, it's, it's very difficult to pick. But uh, obviously, knowing me being an Aussie, you know who I'm going to be cheering for in this scenario right now. And rightly so, given that they're Olympic champions. However, that, I suppose, is in the longer distance of 1,000 metres. So it'll be really interesting to see how John Vesthausen and Thomas Green get on here. Ah, uh, look, I've been watching them really closely over the weekend. And, and right now, with the conditions and the headwind, slows the race down. That top end speed isn't quite as high, so it won't quite help certain crews that really go for that top end max speed. So it will hold them back and it's going to add an extra five to ten seconds in the race, which will help them. Well, it'll be an interesting challenge, I'm sure. And as you said, incredibly competitive. You can't pin the gold medal on any one of these crews. Any one of the nine here have the chance of winning. So we've got Vlek and Botek, the experienced Slovakians in lane one. Frank and Florstedt, the Germans, in lane two. Kukarik and Trunov from the K4 that won the bronze medal here. They go in lane three. Ribeiro and Baptista, the fast-starting Portuguese, who were the winners in Poland at the World Cup, go in lane four. John Vesthausen and Tom Green, as we've said, from Australia, go in lane five. Benche Nadas with the world and Olympic champion in the K1. Valent Kopas from Hungary go in lane six. Maldonis and Olinik from Lithuania are in seven. Eka and Small from the USA, we'll see in just a moment. They go in lane eight. There they are. And Spisar and Havel, always well drilled. The Czech crews there over in lane nine. So a new Olympic distance for Paris. Ever since that had been announced, this event has become more and more competitive. The margins are very, very tight. 500 meters, so the start will be important. But as you said, David, headwind perhaps slowing times down. Expect the Lithuanians, the Portuguese, the Germans to really put that race out. Ukraine will come home that last 150. They hold back a little bit and look for that 150. So we're away cleanly this time. It looked to be lane four. The Portuguese, unsurprisingly, got away to a good start. That's what they will normally do. Joao Ribeiro and Messias Baptista, the winners from the World Cup in Poznan. But this is 500 metres. It's still, although fast, they've got to pace it. They've got to execute their race correctly. The green boat of the Lithuanians also away well in the early part of this 500 metre race. As we expected, the Lithuanians and Portuguese will go out fast. But let's see how much they can hold on to that. Because this headwind will hurt a crew that goes out too hard. Right now, the Aussies will be just feeling that pressure of the Portuguese moving out. And hopefully they can get dragged out. Ukraine will be next to them as well. Well, it'll be really interesting to see whether the Australians and the Hungarians who didn't get to the best start, but they're still in this. They're only half a boat length down, beginning to move forward. It is, in fact, the Hungarians that look to be moving well at the moment. Of course, they've got Valent Kopas in there, the world and Olympic champion in the back of that boat, pushing them along. But there are five or six boats, all within a great chance of not only a medal, but winning this one. And again, the Lithuanians seem to step it up. Lithuanians are holding on to that lead. Aussies will feel the Portuguese falling back. They'll feel, they'll feel confident. They'll want to move through. But the Lithuanians are still holding on to that lead. Wait, look for the Ukrainians up top. They do have a strong finish. 
Yeah, they do. The Ukrainians in lane three. They've still got a bit of work to do. Now, the pressure is all on the Lithuanians now. 50 or 60 metres to go. The Hungarians beginning to move through. We start to see West Hosen and Green from Australia still. They've got limited time to pick it up now. Looks to me like the Hungarians really burying themselves here. They have the lead ahead of the Lithuanians. And Australia maybe in a battle with the Czech Republic for the bronze medal. Unbelievable effort from the Hungarians. Well, have we got a new Hungarian crew here? They've struggled. They've had the two best kayak paddlers in the world, Adam Varga and Balint Kopas, come together in K2, and that didn't work. So they've they've tried things again, but this time round, maybe Benche Nadas and Balint Kopas. Well, what a partnership! Absolutely, coming out in such a such an event with so much intensity and pressure on that race and not being paddling together as frequently as they have been to come out and win some favored crews over that unbelievable effort yeah not only to come back and win but win such a competitive race and it was really interesting to see wasn't it the early starters was uh, with portugal lithuania got away really well um ukraine's didn't really make a move there's tom green John Vesthausen, they've had their own problems, haven't they? Thomas Green having COVID only just a week ago, so I don't think they'll be too disappointed with their race. But in the middle, they began to move through. It was actually the Hungarians that just perhaps kept the length of the stroke that little bit better and were able to pick it up. And they had the best of the boat speed down in the last 70 or 80 metres. Oh, well, yeah, look. Ukrainians usually they have been really strong at the at, at that back end. Maybe I'll put the mocker on them, but to see the Lithuanians, the Hungarians come through over the Aussies in that last 200, that's a really impressive last 200 kick by both crews. Yeah, there we go. The acceleration from the Hungarians towards the end, just ahead of Lithuania. Let's keep an eye on the bronze medal. I think going to Australia, it does indeed. So Tom Green and John Westhausen pick up a medal there and very shortly on the pontoon, hopefully we'll get a word with the Hungarian crew who will be delighted to pick up another gold medal. What a fantastic win for Hungary. I can see what that means for you. You're so emotional. Tell me. What... Um, yes, because it's a new Olympic event, Olympic race, and we, we won it together. And uh, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. So I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. Valik, what a weekend for you. 1,000 meter world champion, now K2 world champion can you believe that yes it was amazing race i think we were in a very good form and this is very important in this uh, in this 500 meter distance and today was uh, the best day for me it really was your day congratulations boys thank well you. done thank you very much well, not only their day, but Valin Kopas has been his weekend. He was put under huge pressure yesterday by the former world champion, Fernando Pimenta, but he came up with the goods. They did that again in the K2 today. Delighted with the gold medal there, 134.98. Maldonis and Olenek held on bravely for the silver, and Jean Vesthausen and Tom Green pick up a bronze medal for Australia. What a way to end our session today. Well.